performing two contrasting monologues. The first being Flies by Lynn Nottage as Letitia and The Missing Girl by Moliere as Selamie. You want no problems? You stick with the recipe and Clyde won't give you no trouble. And believe me, you don't want trouble with that chick because she's cray cray. Because if you're like me, you need this one. You know what it's like. Ain't shit for misery. Seven months ago, I got out. The cold one hit me hard and things got real grim. $75 in my pocket. Nobody to hold my hand. Nobody to say, it's going to be okay, baby. I dialed the same number you dialed and Clyde answered. And let me tell you something. You didn't get you done right out of options, and nobody's gonna hire you except for Clyde, especially you, the way you is. Because if you're here, you've done something. We all done something, and we just buy it our time till we get to another place. No, Clyde ain't nice. She would make you crawl before you walk, but she knows the deal. She's the gatekeeper, and ain't no getting around her. So that motherfucking creamy parmesan <laughs> will go on nothing but the Rama Mama chicken around. Come right there. Madam, I owe you many things. This warning has put me deeply in your debt. So far from taking it amiss, I shall insist upon repaying it at once in time by giving you a warning which concerns your honor. Since you proved yourself my friend by telling me to come and talk about me, I'll follow, in my turn, this good example by telling you what people say of you. Where I was visiting the other day, I met some people of special merit and discussing true ideals of virtue, turn their remarks upon your character, dear madam. But your prudery and fervor were not regarded as the best of models. Your false assumptions of a great demeanor, your endless talk of virtue and of honor, your mincings and mouthings that the shadow of course can set some doubt the word may have, the highest theme of which you hold yourself in, pitying glances you cast on others, your constant preaching of accurate judgments on things considered quite innocent and honorable. All of this, to be quite frank with you, dear madam, was the blame of one accord. What is the good, they said, of all this outward show of virtue and modesty when the rest relies on? She's punctual at her presence, to a degree, but beats her servants and won't pay their wages. At public worship, she displays great fervor, but paints herself and tries to play her beauty. She has the nude and pictures covered, but the reality, meanwhile, she likes. <laughs> I took your part against them, one and all, assuring them that this was calumny. But their opinions all combined against me, and their conclusion was that you'll do well to meddle less with other people's conduct and look a bit more closely to your own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 